We check in on some LA Kings prospects who won medals at the World Junior Championships, plus a rival report that is not great news for the Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. My name is Eddie Garcia. I'm your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for almost 30 years, the past 20 plus years, the Fox Sports Radio Network, where I'm a co host, sidekick, reporter, and NHL analyst, also co host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for the past 30 years. We are 50 days away from the LA Kings regular season opener, October 11th against the Vegas Golden Knights at crypto.com arena. We're 26 days away from the 2022 rookie face-off in San Jose, where Kings rookies will be taking part in a three-day event against five other Western conference opponents. So the countdowns are on for those two events and Speaking of the future of the LA Kings, three prospects just wrapped up play at the World Junior Championships in Edmonton, taking medals. Uh, Canada beat Finland 3-2 in overtime in a thrilling gold medal game. And LA Kings prospects forward Casper uh, Simon Tavel and Samuel Hellenius had to settle for silver in that one, uh, but a good performance by Team Finland and in particular Kings prospect Casper Simon Tavel, uh, third round pick of the Kings in 2020, ended up being one of the top scorers in the tournament. He had five goals and four assists for nine points in seven games. Uh, Hellenius had um, one goal in six games. He was a second-round pick of the Kings in 2021. And Kings defenseman prospect Helga Granz, second-round pick in 2020, won bronze with Sweden following a 3-1 victory over the Czech Republic. Granz finished with four assists in seven games. So uh, Simon Thievel, uh, Hellenius, and Granz, where, where do they fit right now kind of in the Kings prospect pool? I'd say they're kind of C-level prospects at this point. Still a lot to, to prove and still a long way to go, although the way Simon Thievel played, uh, he, he keeps playing like that. He'll be uh, knocking on the door with the LA Kings sooner rather than later. But I think if you're looking in the, in the big picture, if you're looking at like the Kings a-level prospects slash rookies would be the, the names you're probably all familiar with. Quentin Byfield, Arthur Kaliev, Alex Turcotte, Rasmus Kupari, Gabe Velarde, Jared Anderson Dolan, Sean Dursey, uh, Jordan Spence. Those would all be the A-level prospects uh, for the Kings. Um, I wouldn't include guys like Mikey Anderson or Tobias Bjornfoot in that list because even though they're the same age as a lot of those guys or maybe even a little bit younger, uh, they've played over 100 NHL games, so I would I would remove them from the prospect slash rookie uh, type of player for the LA Kings. They've now, I think, in a in a short sample size, proven themselves as NHL players. At least that's my opinion. As far as like the B level prospects for the LA Kings, that would be players there. Are, they're probably at least a year away and and likely haven't seen any NHL experience at this point. That would be B level guys. Uh, I would include Brant Clark actually in the B level because he's such a high level prospect. Um, then you'd have guys like Tyler Madden, Akil Thomas, Samuel Fagamo. Um, I'll even throw Jacob Moverari in there as well, even though he did play a handful of games with the LA Kings last season. And then you've got C level prospects, which is what we're talking about. I think more with the players we saw um, representing the LA Kings at the world juniors uh, players like Casper Simon Tyvel, uh, Samuel Hellenius, Helga Granz, uh, Aiden Dudas and, and Martin Chromiak. Uh, so good showing for the Kings uh, at the World Juniors. It was disappointing that Brant Clark was not a part of the gold medal uh, Canadian team. Uh, it certainly would have been great to see him get that experience. I'm sure he's disappointed as well. Uh, as we've talked about, um, that was a bit of a controversial decision by Team Canada to not include him. Uh, but as we said, hopefully, well, the good news is he, he didn't get hurt, although there was nobody that really got seriously injured as far as I know uh, in the tournament. But hopefully that will provide some motivation for him to prove some people wrong because clearly there are some out there who apparently uh, doubt his skills, at least to some point. Now, if the World Junior Championship is not something that's really on your radar, there is some news out there that might change that. Now, it is a pr premier level event. Um, it, it is usually in Canada, and I know it's a big, big deal there and in other parts of the world. Um, and, and maybe it's a big deal in certain regions of the U.S., but 
I guess you could be forgiven if you were a Los Angeles, Southern California hockey fan, and you're not really into the World Juniors. You're you're interested in how Kings prospects might do, or if you're a Ducks fan, Ducks prospects. But um, it's not something that's really on your radar. Uh, but there is some news that might change that. Um, now, this event rotates uh, as far as where it is held, not only in North America, but, but in the world. Um, and it was in Edmonton, uh, Alberta this past year. And there are reports that it could be coming to the Western U.S. for the first time ever. Um, the next time this event is going to be held in the United States, Las Vegas is going to be putting in a bid. And I understand there's a decent movement behind having that event in a non-traditional place to obviously get interest from people like you, Kings fans, who... Obviously, making a quick drive to Vegas isn't a big deal. It's probably something you do, I would guess, maybe once a year. I know it is for me. Um, I, I've gone there recently for um, the Pro Bowl in the NFL, the NHL All-Star festivities as well. Um, there's going to be a Super Bowl there in the near future. Um, so obviously, Vegas is a is a place that is really growing as a, a sports market. And uh, yeah, so we know hockey has gotten very popular with the Vegas Golden Knights there in Las Vegas. And so, um, yeah, they're putting in a bid to host now. Um, so this is a unique opportunity. If it happens for people in the Western part of the U S to check out this event and see the future stars, potentially the future stars of the NHL in action. Uh, and again, it's not ever been close really. I mean, I guess you could say Edmonton is the Western part of North America, but as far as, you know, the LA area, so to speak, or the West Southwestern part of the U S never even close. It's been in places when it's been in the U S it's been in places like Boston, uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota. I think the last time it was in the U S it was in Buffalo. So again, as you can tell, like Minnesota would certainly be another, uh, another place where it would be, um, held, held previously. So nowhere close to Los Angeles. So this could, I, I know for me as a hockey fan, if this event were held in Las Vegas, I would absolutely attend. Um, it's a, it's a great event that I've always been interested in, but I, I mean, never so much so that I'm going to travel across the country or, or out of the country uh, to check it out. But that was some news I thought that might be interesting to you as Kings fans or hockey fans in the, uh, in the Western part of the U S that uh, apparently this would be like three years away. Um, uh, but, but Vegas is putting in a bid for the next time that the world juniors are going to be held in the U S and, uh, I know that there is a decent push to have it in a non-traditional place again, to get people like you and me interested, more interested maybe, uh, in the world junior championship. So there was a report on the world juniors for this year and, and how a couple of uh, LA Kings did, um, in the tournament. Hey, I want to tell you about a product I use every day. It's called AG1. When you get up to over 50, which I am, unfortunately, sometimes you need a little bit, a little extra to kind of get you going. And with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and antigens to help you get your day off right. This special blend of ingredients support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. AG1 contains Less than one gram of sugar, and it costs you less than $3 a day, cheaper than your morning coffee or your after-work libation. Uh, it's gotten over 7,000 five-star reviews, and Athletic Greens is even recommended by professional athletes. Now's your time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water. That's it. There's no need for a bunch of different pills and supplements to look out for your health and to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now, you probably already know this, uh, but we are still waiting on news regarding the re-signing of restricted free agents, defenseman Mikey Anderson and Sean Dursey. And I still don't think there's any reason to be overly uh, concerned that they haven't been signed at this point. They are the final two pieces yet to be signed for the LA Kings, and LA is likely going to go over the salary cap once those deals are announced, and then they will have to make some decisions and moves to get under the cap once the season starts. But there's still plenty of time for that to take place. And if you're looking at other comps around the NHL, there are still a bunch of players and, and frankly, much more important players to their teams than Mikey Anderson and Sean Dursey are to the Kings that are yet unsigned. I've, I've talked about this in, in a, a recent episode, but the Dallas Stars have two of their best players 
are still yet signed as restricted free agents. They are Jason Robertson, their best young forward, one of the top players on their team, and their number one goalie, Jake Ottinger. Uh, so they have yet to sign those two guys. And uh, so it, just as an example, there are some very important players out there who have not agreed to terms as of yet. This is still very much, um, you know, a period in the NHL calendar where a lot of things are being negotiated and things will eventually get done. And, and Mikey Anderson and Sean Dursey are eventually going to agree to contracts with the LA Kings. They're not going to sit out a year, obviously. It's just the working and the, and the negotiating and to see exactly what the Kings are willing to pay and what those two players are willing to agree to. Uh, for their services, but we still are awaiting word. If it doesn't happen by the end of this month, then I would be like, what the heck's going on? What the heck's going on? But there's still, there's still time uh, for this to, to take place. Actually, not even into September. Uh, this, this, I still wouldn't be worried about it into September. Once we start getting towards uh, rookie camp and training camp, then, then you could be like, what the heck's going on? But I'd still really no need to be concerned at this point. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of Kings news lately, which is not unusual for this time of the year. Um, and uh, we have been doing our rival reports kind of in this quote unquote dead time of the NHL season for news, um, which has helped kind of fill the void. So I hope that you guys have been enjoying uh, those interviews with the other locked on hosts from around the Pacific Division, the guys uh, in uh, San Jose. Uh, and in Vancouver, I did do um, an interview with the guys in Vegas. Um, if you didn't see that because it wasn't posted on the YouTube channel, we had some technical issues. And so they posted it on their YouTube channel. So if you want to see my interview with the two hosts of Locked On Vegas Golden Knights, you'll have to go to their YouTube channel and check that out. Um, but we've gotten a chance to talk to almost all the hosts. We do have another Rival Report interview coming up tomorrow. We're going to talk with Jess Belmasto. She is the host of Locked On Flames and a lot of stuff going on with the Calgary Flames, including something we're going to tell you about in a moment in case you might have missed it. Um, we're still waiting to hear from the Locked On Kraken host. So I think she's on vacation or he, I think it's a she, but anyway. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, we've been doing a lot of interviews. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed uh, what's been going on with that. Um, and, and I did want to quickly kind of talk about what's going on with this show, the direction, I guess that it's going in. This is my 20th episode of locked on LA Kings, uh, since taking over for Sarah Amphipato. Um, I've been doing a show every day since then it's your team every day. Um, in this off season, frankly, it's not required of the locked on hosts to do a show every day, but I felt it was important with a new host to kind of put my stamp on things to let you know that, yes, yes, in fact, you are going to get a new show every day on Locked on LA Kings. And it has been a little bit of a learning curve for me. I am a radio veteran, so the audio side of this isn't an issue at all. But the video side has been something that I've been working on and trying to get up to speed and also hopefully improving um, as we go along. I hope you've noticed the audio quality has improved since when I started um, we've got some lighting in here now in my uh, my slash office studio, which hopefully is is helping with the presentation of it as well. I still want to upgrade the vi video quality of the channel. Um, but as, I, as I've said, this is all a bit of a work in progress, especially on the YouTube side of things for me to kind of get up to speed. And then my goal was to have it once we're ready to start the season, we're firing on all cylinders and everything is going exactly uh, the way I want it to for you guys. And I think we're on track for that. Um, with the interviews that I've done recently, I've gotten much more comfortable with the logistics of how that all works. And so going forward, um, we may check in with other people outside of the King's realm, so to speak, um, as far as King's opponents and things like that. We may do that occasionally, but going forward, a lot of the interviews we're going to do are going to be LA Kings focused, people that are involved with the LA Kings, people that cover the LA Kings, people that work in the organization with the LA Kings. Uh, it's going to be a lot more LA Kings centric going forward. Um, so that's something to hopefully uh, look forward to for you guys. There are also some other bells and whistles that I'm working on to see how we can incorporate it into the show as well. Um, it's unlikely if you're, if you're wondering that we would be able to get one-on-one -on -one interviews um, with star players for the LA Kings. I mean, frankly, and no disrespect, uh, Andre Kopitar, Drew Doughty, they're not going to come on this show. It's just not something that they would be approached by, by the LA Kings media relations department. It's just not a big enough platform. I mean, they're going to go on the NHL network. They're going to go on TNT and ESPN. That's the kind of thing that those guys are going to do. Uh, but there is a possibility we could incorporate 
video uh, interviews with those types of players that are getting specifically in the locker room or at the morning skate, things like that. So that's something to be worked on. And again, we can do the one-on-one -on -one interviews with people that cover the Kings uh, that are in and around uh, the Kings organization to provide us some insight on the team as well, whether it's specific, you know, hardcore kind of hockey stuff, or maybe even some kind of, uh, I don't know, ancillary things involving the LA Kings. There's a specific interview I have in mind with a somewhat a friend of mine that you all should know as LA Kings fans that um, would be able to come on the show and, and I think uh, provide some insight into um, kind of the game day operations of what goes on when the LA Kings have a home game. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of give you an update on what's been going on um, since I've taken over as host. Again, this is my 20th episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed doing it and just looking forward to the show getting bigger and better um, going forward. So I mentioned this is my 20th episode. I guess that's kind of an anniversary of sorts. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, um, but in the past uh, 10 days, there was a, uh, a an anniversary involving the LA Kings, a huge anniversary. It's been, it was pretty quiet. Um, there was a tweet sent out by the wife of former LA King, now Pittsburgh Penguin, Jeff Carter. And uh, the, apparently uh, the Kings held their 10-year Stanley Cup championship anniversary just up the road from me. I live in San Pedro. Um, just down the road up the coast here is a resort, Terranea, which you may or may not be familiar with. A lot of big events are held there. And the Kings had their 10-year anniversary of the 2012 Stanley Cup winning championship team. And, and Jeff Carter's wife tweeted out a group photo of everyone. And, uh, you know, he had to kind of blow it up with your phone there. Um, but it looked like everybody, everybody was there. Um, I, I, I did uh, see, obviously, Jeff Carter was there. Mike Richards was there. Um, Alec Martinez, Justin Williams. Of course, all the current LA Kings, Dustin Brown, Andre Kopitar, Drew Doughty, um, Jonathan Quick. But it looked like everybody showed up. And I'm guessing the LA Kings paid for this, for this kind of reunion. Uh, Terranea is a very, very nice place, upscale place. Um, and, and even Daryl Sutter and Chris Sutter were there as well. Dean Lombardi was there. So it looked like everyone associated with that 2012 championship team, of course, the first Stanley cup winning team in the history of the LA Kings, uh, celebrated their 10 year anniversary. And I know that I had read, uh, a couple weeks ago about the Kings promotional schedule. You know, the thing they put out every year and they tell you, Oh, we're going to have star Wars night. We're going to have, uh, you know, chargers night, Dodgers night, Rams night, things like that. I did not see anything that specifically said there's going to be a championship anniversary night. So I don't know what they're planning on doing, but when you're talking about anniversary celebrations, uh, this is about as big as it gets for the LA Kings. We know about Dustin Brown night when they're going to retire his Jersey and unveil the statue, but I haven't heard anything about a 2012 Stanley cup championship reunion celebration recognition. And, um, I got to assume they're going to do something. Uh, if not, that would be extremely disappointing because uh, as you well know, um, frankly, as a longtime LA Kings fan, there was a time when you actually wondered, are the LA Kings ever going to win a Stanley cup? I know that may sound dramatic looking at it now that they've won two Stanley cups, but let me just tell you this as, uh, as the husband of a long suffering LA slash San Diego Chargers fan. My wife is still waiting for her team to win a Super Bowl. She's been a season ticket holder for 25 years and she has not seen her team win a Super Bowl. They've gone to one and they got they got blown out. Uh so you know you think at some point your team's gonna finally break through at one point, right? But not always the case. Um hey there are still I mean you know the Buffalo Sabres are still out there as a team that's been around a long time. They still have yet to, to taste uh, the drink from Lord Stanley's Cup. So anyway, my, my point is when the Kings won the Stanley Cup, it was obviously a huge deal. If you've been a Kings fan or for any length of time, you know it was a, it was a huge deal. And, and maybe you're a fan who became a fan because of that 2012 championship season. So I don't know what the Kings are planning on doing, um, but I will say this. I am going to make it my goal on this show to have someone from that team join us as a guest. And, may, and hopefully multiple people from that team to join us as a guest and reminisce about that 2012 season um, because it was a huge point in the history of the LA Kings. And uh, that needs to be done. So hopefully the Kings are going to be doing something throughout the year. I don't know if there's going to be a specific day 
where they do something. But um, yeah, that needs to happen. That, that absolutely needs to happen. We need to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the LA Kings winning their first ever Stanley Cup. Hey, just a reminder that the Locked On NHL podcast has you covered for all your league-wide NHL talk with a rotating cast of local hosts from the Locked On NHL channels, breaking down the biggest stories in hockey five days a week. Subscribe for free on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. We close out uh, this show with a quick rival report, and uh, we're going to have much more on this tomorrow with Locked On Flames host Jess Belmosto. Um, But if you missed it, the Calgary Flames, the reigning Pacific Division champs, Signed the biggest free agent forward available, Nazem Kadri. He gets a uh, seven-year deal. I think it was like $49 million. Um, so the Flames, who lost their top two scorers from a year ago, Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk, have now replaced them with Jonathan Huberdeau in a trade with Florida. He was fifth in the MVP voting last year. And now Nazem Kadri, the best available free agent on the market. So as Kings fans, we were all hoping that the reigning league champs were going to take a fairly significant step back. It looked like that was going to be the case. Now, not so much. Um, the Flames should be uh, probably just as good as they were a year ago. So um, that's that's going to be tough in a very competitive Pacific division. Um, we did have a poll of all of the locked on NHL hosts uh, to get their thoughts on what the standings are going to be at the end of the year uh, for the Pacific division. And obviously this is going to, we'll be talking more about this as we get closer to the season. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to put up the graphic. If not, I'll explain it to you, but here was a, uh, the results of voting of locked on NHL hosts, as far as how the Pacific division standings are going to turn out. Um, And probably not a surprise the Edmonton Oilers were picked as number one, the Calgary Flames second, and the LA Kings were picked at number three. So in the quote-unquote expert opinions of your locked-on NHL hosts, uh, they believe that the Kings are going to be a playoff team as the third team in the division. Uh, from there, they had the Vancouver Canucks fourth, Vegas Golden Knights fifth, Anaheim Ducks sixth, Seattle Kraken seventh, and San Jose Sharks in eighth. Uh, Other than the Kraken and the Sharks, that was exactly my voting as well. I actually had Seattle finishing in last again. But I did have the Oilers first, the Flames second, and the Kings third. I think the Canucks could be a team to be heard from uh, and could battle the Kings for a playoff spot. Vegas is a wild card to me right now. I don't know what's going on with them after losing their number one um, goaltender in Robin Leonard. They're still over the salary cap at this point. They've got to make moves. Going forward, although I think it helped that Robin Leonard is uh, now on long-term injured reserve as far as their salary cap issues. But yeah, that was just a a quick kind of early prediction as far as what some of the locked-on NHL hosts are thinking about the Pacific Division. And I actually am am kind of in line uh, with what they were thinking as well. And again, once we get closer to the start of the season, we're going to do more more of a deep dive onto the teams that we think are going to be battling for playoff spots, who the Kings biggest competition is going to be for those playoff spots going into this season. Want to remind you to keep up to date on this show and what's going on with the LA Kings. Please follow us on Twitter. We are at locked on LA Kings. If you'd like to send me an email with any comments or thoughts on the Kings or this show, uh, you can email me locked on Eddie at gmail.com. E D D I E locked on Eddie at gmail.com we will have a friday email segment coming up we didn't do it last week we are going to do it this coming week uh and uh, also again uh thanks for making locked on la kings your first listen every day make your second listen locked on nhl locked on experts give you a daily 30 minute podcast of all things nhl all year long stay up to date on everything in the hockey world with locked on nhl your daily 30 minute nhl podcast once again thank you so much uh for celebrating my 20th episode with you guys again i hope really i really hope you're enjoying what you're seeing i think we're going to just get bigger and better as the season goes along but thanks for being here with me for now again if you're watching on youtube a like and a subscribe would very much be appreciated and hope you're enjoying the product uh, as it is so far so again thanks for listening thanks for watching locked on la kings i'm eddie garcia reminding you as always go kings go